<laughs> Hello, everybody. Please. Welcome to Disabilities Redefined with Dr. Wagner. I am Dr. Truett Wagner, and believe me, we have a great, great lineup for you this evening. Uh, Barbara Rosenblatt from Orange is the New Black, Frank DeCaro, and the one and only Greg Otto, producer, director, uh, what else was it? Um, uh, cinematographer? Writer, cinematographer. Yes, the whole nine yards on an amazing film called Run. I've, I've seen it about five times already. Mm. And Greg, I would actually like to see it again, to be honest with you. Thank you. Yes. So um, anyway, enough about you right now. We're going to go over here. <laughs> I hate Barbara. hearing that. Enough about you. I the worst words in the English language. <laughs> How are you? I'm happy as a clam. Mm-hmm. Yes, well, listen, I'm happy as a clam, too, because you're here with us. Well, thank you. Yes. You know, when I was doing my homework on you, a lot of people do not realize you are the one when it comes to audiobooks. You have won eight, is it now, Audi Awards? Yes. More than any other female performer. <laughs> <laughs> the Audi is the... Um the Oscar of the audiobook industry. Mm -hmm. And I don't even call myself a narrator. I, uh, I consider myself a recording artist. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you prepare for that? Because I, when I was uh, looking over your resume, you've done video games, you've done novels, you've yeah. done... I get a lot of street cred when I tell people I've done Grand Theft Auto. And I go, <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, really? <laughs> well, you did too. You did Grand Theft Auto. Liberty City, City and, and Vice City stories. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. This is. I was doing a. I was. I was doing um, a Broadway show, and I had a. Uh, uh, it was the Sunday matinee, and I got a little note backstage from my stage manager who said. There's somebody waiting for you outside, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of people. It's Sunday, you're done, you've done eight shows a week, and you want to go home, <laughs> you know? And uh, so I took my makeup off, and I walk out into the street, and there are these two people from England mm -hmm. standing there going, you're Miss Rosenblatt, oh my God, would you take a selfie with us? <laughs> uh, and they pulled out this photo of my avatar from Grand Theft Auto, where I played this deranged, uh, coke-obsessed um, business person called Reni Wasselmeier, uh, you know, who's German, saying, oh, give me some blow, darling, you know? <laughs> and they showed me the avatar, and they gave it to me. It was so thrilling. I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> well, we also know you as Miss Rosa from Orange is the New Black, and I will say, and I, I told everybody already, that was my favorite season. Season two. Season two, yeah. Season two was amazing. What was it like being on that show? It was, without question, the, the greatest opportunity as an actor that I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Because I was in no position to know where my character was going <laughs> by the end of season one. I'd had a wonderful time. Right. But uh, I wasn't prepared for what was going to happen in season two until it's, things started to happen and I thought, Holy crap, <laughs> my life is about to change. <laughs> uh, but I'm so grateful for it, I can't tell mm. you. Well, I tell you, I, um, when I knew you were going to be on here, I kind of went back and looked at a few other, a uh, few uh, of the shows. Mm -hmm. And I knew you had had it with those, with those uh, inmates that kept bothering everybody when they poured, uh, there was oh, a scene. Yes, yeah, yes. There was a scene that you had your food and they wanted to sit somewhere you were sitting or wherever and they poured it and you said, Whatever you said, but I could see it all over you, and I said, somebody's going to get it big time after that. <laughs> well, when that happened, that was sort of the middle of, of season two, yes. and I recall thinking to myself, this is not going to end well. No, yeah, yeah, and we saw it all over you, absolutely, yes, we saw it all over you. <laughs> Always so rude, that one. <laughs> well, you've had an amazing career, you know, again, you have worked with some great British actors, you know, Nigel uh, Hawthorne, Bing K Kingsley. You know, I mean, and including yourself, you guys were all in this. What, what was the name? Uh, uh, Turtle, Turtle Diary. Tur yeah. yeah. And you've all done, so, I mean, was there a time when you were back in England that you were like, you know what, I know I'm going to make it, and no matter what happens. You know, I think you just keep at it. As you grow, you begin to discover what it is that's important to you. Like, when you work with a like with a director like Craig Otto, who mm -hmm. really knows how to connect with an actor, you know? 
he gives you the kind of juice to bring your A game, you know, because he trusts you. Mm -hmm. And in the early days of my acting, there was more of a level of desperation, will I ever work again, you know? And as you get older and more comfortable within yourself, collaborating with people like Craig and the other people that I have worked with, mm -hmm. um, it just gets a richer experience right. as you get older. That was, that was you, you led me into my uh, next question. How has it changed for you as someone so established and has seen so many different changes and, 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 the, and the business has just changed and morphed into at one time we had three, three networks, mm. ABC, NBC, CBS, and now, now we've got, you know, so many different, you know, channels and, and opportunities for people to work. Uh, how has it changed as, as far as your position being on set in the culture of show business? The culture is very much the same. It's the responsibility when, whether you're doing an audiobook, a commercial, a movie, a TV show, you're there to tell a story mm -hmm. and bring truth to it. If you can bring truth to it, it will come through. The only difference now is there's a ton more of it than there ever was. Yes. The point about Netflix and why it was so uh, important in my particular journey is that it's not network, it was out there. Mm -hmm. So you start to create this buzz simply because Netflix, Netflix floats in the ether and people go, Orange, House of Cards? It, we created That's binging cool. because people had an opportunity, no matter where they were on the planet, mm -hmm. to go, oh, let me grab that and, and, and watch that. Oh, I like this. I'm going to watch it at 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. You know? You can't do that with network. I like what you said, the culture is the same. Mm -hmm. Yes, people are still... People well, the still, aim is the same. Yes, the aim is the same. Yeah, people know? are still wanting to be part of show business. And tell a good story. Yes. And connect. Mm -hmm. It's all about connection. Right. That's for sure. Right. Uh, you know, what you're saying about, about telling a good story and doing so many things, it's very inspiring to hear that because I do journalism. I've written another book. I perform, I do stand up, I occasionally act for someone, and... And um, you can cook, too! I can, I can, I can, <laughs> you can cook! I am, I'm yeah. a good cook. <laughs> I can't drive a cab, though, I can't do the whole number, but I can, I can definitely, but I can cook. Now, but you yeah. two were in the movie, now, have you, you, did you get to meet in any capacity? No, we weren't in the yeah. scenes, but when I saw her scene, I just was like, you, and I just told her tonight, I said, you bring so much humanity yes, to this film. Yes, absolutely. It's just, it, it's, it's like, it's someone, it's like you work cold and suddenly there's a fire lit mm -hmm. and you can do this around the character. I mean, Thank that's you. what it felt like watching you do. I just, it was just so, it was magical when, you, when you, you show mm -hmm. up on screen. Well, know. listen, the, the entire, you guys are jumping ahead now because I wanted Sorry. to talk about your both, both, both your careers <laughs> oh. and your entire friend here. Well, but the whole, movie was <laughs> yeah. the whole movie was quite magical. As I said, yeah. I've seen it five times and I want to see it again, so send me that password over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. But you sp spoke about books. Now, you've got this great book. I was like, this cult book. What is it? The Dead Celebrity Cookbook? cookbook. Yeah, that was my well, last one. Where did you come up? Dead Celebrities and Cookbook? <laughs> <Okay. When did, laughs> ce you guys are amazing on this show, but I... Yeah. <laughs> no, I did the Dead Celebrity Cookbook because now, I, everything I do in my life is sort of to justify something that is a quirk. Mm -hmm. And I'm a collector, so I've been collecting celebrity recipes, anything that had a celebrity recipe. In mm -hmm. it. And so I, you have to justify why you have... 150 or 200 celebrity cookbooks, and you think, well, I'll write a dead celebrity cookbook. But honestly, it, it's, I've realized that there actually is a through line, you know, when we talk about this, that, that there is a method to the madness of mm -hmm. doing something like that. I want to read I, that. I wrote the book. The recipes are all right. Some of them are all right. Some of them are great. Some of them are like, what? But it wasn't about that. It was about the feeling of you should pay attention to these people. You should know who these performers were and wow. wanting to pay respect to mm. them. And I have this new book now that I'm excited yes. about coming out this month called Drag, yes. Combing Through the Big Wigs of Show Business. Uh -huh. And really, the, it's the same mission, only they're alive, right. the, most of them. I mean, there mm. is, there are, here are the fallen heroes of drag and, you know, and, and That's a great title. Say it know. one more time. That's great. Uh, drag combing through the big wigs of show business. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's like I want I want people who think drag began with the first season of Drag Race to know who Sylvester was and yes. Jim Bailey was mm -hmm. and Flip Wilson was mm -hmm. and um, 
So it's as much about them and and some local New York people. You know, I mean, there's mm -hmm. there are takeouts on on Sweetie and De uh, Dean Johnson yes. and just uh, people who who loomed large in mm -hmm. my consciousness. So it's it is about RuPaul and Lady Bunny and some of the people you know, but it's also a lot of people you don't. Right. And the best review so far, someone said there are surprises on every page, and, mm -hmm. and basically say that even if you, they said if you're an if you're an uh, they said if you're an old queen, it could be. Uh, um, they said it would be a trip down memory lane. If you're young, it'll be a corrective for anything you right. don't know yet. And so it's mm -hmm. kind of, uh, it's the same impetus in a way as the cookbook. It really is. Here's who you need to know. Uh, you've done a lot of also fashion comment commentary. That's I know it was yes. like another life ago. Uh, yeah, but no, but the, was there anybody that you said something about or wrote anything about? And also getting back to the the true character of people, you know, because we, we see people on the red carpet looking all dazzling, whatever. But at the end of the day, they could go home and be just the most down-to-earth people, you know. That, oh, I they, hope not, yeah, yeah. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> so when you had to, let's say, critique someone or whatever, how did you approach it? Is it just fun and games? Am I, am I going to ruin someone's day? But, you know, what, I, what, what I, mindset were you in? When you ever I did? wanted to write funny stuff no matter what. I, even if I was covering something that's as earnest as fashion can sometimes uh -huh. be, I was like, oh, I'm going to have fun with this. Mm -hmm. But I did get banned from Dolce & Gabbana once. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I didn't get to go for several seasons. I oh, used to wow. go and you'd sit during that show and you're not getting in. And it's like, oh well. But yeah, it was weird. But you know, you'd go to things and suddenly you're like, we would go to parties at Donatella Versace's house. It was like, it's like this happened to somebody other than me, but it did happen to me. Right. Yeah, but it was, sure. but it was yeah. an odd, um, I look back on, oh, here's Elton John holding my first book. It's weird, mm -hmm. you know, because it's like, I don't live that life, you right. know. But it right. was fun to dip a toe, I'll tell you. It was fun. <laughs> Okay, well, getting back to fun, and I, I, I think I do want to maintain the funness to this, uh, you know, conversation. But we are going to get into something a little. So bit far, more. you're doing really well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that fun. I'm more of a serious Jeez, person. Huh? But you guys. Are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, social media, getting it, you know, and again, you all are everywhere on social media, uh, and or YouTube or Google, however you want to say it. Social media is very good now when it comes to helping us change the norms. For example, this uh, amazing young woman, her, her name on Instagram is Wheelchair Rapunzel, and she has a line of t-shirts. And um, I, I buy her t-shirts and I wear them on the show. I just finished a documentary. I bought some and, and the people in the documentary wore the t-shirts. Uh, Disabled body, Bodies Matter, you know, was, was a logo she just came up with. Now she has got this great logo, Not Barbie. I love it, like Not Barbie, like not every woman is Barbie. Now you went all out and made a movie, not just a movie, but a well, great movie. Thank you. Yes, uh, uh, based around, uh, well, tell us about well, the character. For, before yes. I do, let me address yes, this point course, that you're absolutely. bringing up, is, yes. is that, um, so there's a very strong deaf theme to this absolutely. film run. And we had a, a, an incredible community of 25 mm -hmm. hard of hearing and mostly deaf actors playing various featured roles in the film. And when I was researching this film as we were writing it, um, one of the things that I, I was looking for was groups mm -hmm. where people who are deaf would get together. And these existed in the past, but they don't anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I was a little confused about that. And I was educated on set how Nowadays, it's incredible for people who are deaf, especially, who are signing, that are, who are FaceTiming. It's brought this entire community because the people who we had as part of our film mm -hmm. live in rural Michigan and Pennsylvania and not in any metropolis. Metropolis? Yes. Um, yes. And so <laughs> they, 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 they don't live in cities. <laughs> I like making up words. <laughs> Let's just say that. But, but the fact that they can they can connect now. Exactly. Uh, the fact that they can connect now and just instantly be part of a community is just remarkable. And I think that those kind of advances when it comes to social media are some of the most incredibly positive yes. ones mm -hmm. now. Our protagonist, Nick, that's where the movie begins. Who, and who is played by, Fra by our good friend Frankie. Uh, Frank, Frankie yeah. Valenti, incredible actor. Um, really and good. thank you, he is. Um, he, the, the story begins on a rural road in Ohio and in the fall. And as the seasons progress and as he faces more and more challenges, we get to see these layers starting to peel off of mm -hmm. him. So uh, there's uh, a very strong deaf storyline to the film, and part of that is also trying to, f to to see how this character becomes part of a community because of a tragic accident, because of terrible things that can happen in our lives. 
where it actually brings him closer to who he really is and makes him uncover his light. I know that sounds very cliche. Um, but it's a journey, though. It's like going from, yeah. going from resentment to celebration is astonishing. And, and, and the symbolism immediately this. is there. Yeah. Um, and, and again, I, I say I watched it, when I say I watched it four or five times, I did watch it four or five times. And immediately, the, the symbolism, I t actually, I super nerd over here. I took notes, you know, wa <laughs> watching you. this movie. But <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> listen, I'm a college professor. What do you expect? <laughs> the road, the yeah. road in the beginning. You know, and, and you see this young man standing here, but yet behind him, and, and, and we spoke about this, we, we, we got together for coffee after I watched it a few times, and then I went back and watched it again. There's a collection, a, a flock of, of birds behind him, just chaos going like crazy. But yet he is so removed from that. And I, I caught on to, what does that mean? Are they birds of chaos? Are they birds of organization where he's gonna go to? I mean, you cannot help but notice this flock flying everywhere. And they're not CGI, are they? No, no they, the, yeah, that, the was universe, that was a question. I, 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 the, the, universe, universe, the universe smiled on us. Smiled? It's, yeah. They, they're technically called a, a murmuration of birds, which right. I had to Google and look up because I had no idea what it was actually yeah. called. <laughs> but we were out in this field in mid-October and it was just me and a camera and Frankie Valenti, the star of Run. Uh -huh. um, and I'm yelling at him across a cow pasture because he, they're so quiet, he couldn't actually hear hundred, these hundreds of birds that were behind him. And I'm yelling, turn to your left, turn to your left. Um, but the moment we were able to capture with the, the help of the universe very much throughout the production of this film, um, and thanks to these guys as well, mm -hmm. um, was, was one of going on this journey of, again, that disconnection, but then trying to work through your own internal struggles mm -hmm. and chaos, which to me as a writer it binds us much more so than things that we experience at times in the greater world. You know, my mom had passed away, and mm -hmm. the beginning of this film, there's this moment of, of sitting in grief, and that's what I, you know, um, the great Princess Leia, um, she, she had said that, um, she said, take your broken heart and make it into art. Mm -hmm. And Carrie, uh, Carrie thank Fisher, Carrie Fisher, yeah. thank you. And that's where this sort of began as I was being inspired to begin writing this and working with Frankie to develop the story, um, was how do we take someone who is so out of touch with themselves and find access to them opening their heart, mm -hmm. which I think is the most incredible journey. And, and the end result of that is I, I truly feel that once you learn to love yourself, yes. you can then go do for others. Mm -hmm. And that's the message of this film. Yes. The cinematography. Is, oh, is holy good. crap. It, it, I mean, it really is an amazing are, movie. There yeah. are images in this in this film which are startlingly gorgeous. Yes. You know, that would make National Geographic blush. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? Um, and yes, the Lord was with you on weather days. Yes. But you, but you were, you grabbed, the, that's what luck meeting opportunity, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, you found them and you grabbed them, you. you know, to, uh, to, it, it just envelops Frank in his, in his, the, the, the uh, the situation he's mired himself in and mm -hmm. the glory that surrounds him, you know, it, from a natural world standpoint, it's spectacular to look at. It's it, a real it, life form. It took me I, home, I tell you. I, I, I'm so sorry. I, no, no, I, I was going to say, I, I, the mm -hmm. moment it ended, I, I turned to Craig and I said, at the very least, this will get you a lot of work as a cinematographer. Yeah, because indeed. It's absolutely indeed. gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. At, yeah. A minimum, yeah. right. at, the, at a minimum, you're right. At the very minimum. Yeah. Right. It's, and you sort of, know, it's like a calling card. You just you would just be like, uh, hire that the, whoever did that. <laughs> just get that it. Yeah. 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 I remember it took me home. I remember being because uh, I grew up down south as a kid, and, and the flock was South so, Carolina. South I'll Carolina. Pay Carolina. Yeah, <laughs> the flock and this and the, I think the, you're from the Denmark. I'm going the, with that. No, <laughs> <laughs> Denmark again. <laughs> but um, it, it, listen, it was beautiful. Thank and, you. And, 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 and you know where we were going with this was was the the earth, the land, and the seasons actually play character in this film. I was gonna ask the weather. Um, the it, weather is, is, I also noticed the weather. There were, there were days that Frankie seemed happy and it was sun shining out. And mm -hmm. what, what is one of my favorite scenes? And you always have to correct me on this because mm -hmm. he, and again, we don't hear, this is what I like so much about this one scene. He's smiling, it's sun shining, 
he says, uh, I just want to, he's helping a guy, because he's a mechanic in the movie, mm -hmm. as we all know. But he's, he says um, to this guy, uh, now, I, what does he so, say? So there's a moment in the film. Yes. And, you know, when we're talking about um, people who are different. Yes. I think it's so important, uh, when, and when we were discussing the normalization factor. Yes. That, that this film really supports. Mm -hmm. um, there's a moment of acceptance yes. with one of the characters in the film where, he finally actually mouths, and it's during a musical montage in the film, but he says, I'm deaf. And it's a, a real turning point in the film because he is starting to embrace who he really is and where he is in his journey. And what I, um, just to I have got to say what I love about it, we don't hear him say it. Mm. We see him and we feel it. That's and why it's so cinematic. That's, oh my God. And, and that was something you said you struggled with. You almost uh, said you, you what, what, what was what the story what behind the, that well, one? What, one of the things that I think is really important for this film is that a hearing audience can watch some of the people who are signing. We did this as I was writing it through repetition um, with the dialogue and other factors so that a hearing abled audience could actually understand everything that was being signed mm -hmm. and or watching people read lips so that because you know I, I I was very surprised myself how keyed in I have been to keeping the volume off when we're watching TV at night and kind of still getting what what people are actually saying mm -hmm. um, and the the character who goes deaf in the film it's a it's a, a skill he needs to learn to survive initially let alone thrive as he moves forward in, in the movie and encounters these incredible people, mm -hmm. and Marley Matlin, and Alan Cumming, plug, plug, plug. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we want to have these, it's, it's really very much this protagonist, Nick's journey, but yes. we, we really wanted to have these pivotal moments, and we're so blessed to have Barbara Rosenblatt, Frank DeCaro, mm -hmm. Alan Cumming, and Marley Matlin as part of the cast at these turning points of the film. It wasn't stunt casting. Uh, I actually called, I'd been friends with Frankie Valente, and, and I called him up. He'd been in a movie called Tiger Orange. Yes. He did very well. And... Uh, I, I pitched the idea to him, and he said, I just got goosebumps, I'm in. So it was fascinating to learn about him, how he's actually signed for 20 years. He has multiple, a huge family. A lot of them are actually in our film playing different uh -huh. roles, and some of them are hard of hearing who are playing mm -hmm. those characters. Um, but he has deaf relatives who he's signed with for more than 20 years. And I've been friends with him for over 10, right. so I, I didn't know this. Um, and the credibility he brings to the role because mm -hmm. of his rich experience with the deaf community is uh, mm. remarkable for the material that we're yeah, working he, with. He did an amazing job. He really did. He, did, he really he did. did. Being yes. immersed with that, that community. Yes. Um, and it, it was just, it was, it, was, it was such an incredible experience. My only issue, of course, was I was the cinematographer and lighting guy and sound guy making this film, so I didn't get a chance and to kind of sit with them. And pretty good crafts table, too. Yes, yes. 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 I, I wasn't that. there for that, but I know, I know he said he, <laughs> and, you know he what's amazing? helped with that, too. He, he even builds his own sets. Uh, I, I, that, that was quick, because they're giving us the wind up, but I do oh, want to get it hilarious. in there. You've actually made, what, what was it, the, 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 the vending machine or something. I hear yes. you actually so, put together. Uh, you, you so we ended yeah. up shooting a scene with Alan coming in a hotel. And, and it's the one, we shot it shot here in New York, and it was the one hotel in all of New York City that doesn't have vending machines in a little room on each floor. I'm like, great, that's the scene, part of the scene that I wrote. So I've been up all night creating a fake vending machine, and I have to say, too, my That was a fake vending machine? Yeah. 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 No! Yeah. What was remarkable, yeah. I showed it to Barbara. We'll show no, 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 no. I edited a photograph could, of it from here yeah, to see. Tell. Well, the, I could not tell. I could not tell. It was insane. The best compliment was that <laughs> Alan Cumming went and actually got a dollar bill out as we were <laughs> waiting around. And I had to stop him. I'm like, it doesn't work. It's just plastic um, that I had built. But yeah, so... Um, but you know, as, as a filmmaker, you do what you have to do mm -hmm. to get a film made. I've yes. been with Frankie and these guys uh, and the cast so passionate about this project. And we've overcome so many different hurdles to try to get this, this beautiful story out to the mm -hmm. world. So you just, as a filmmaker, you just have to do what you have to do. If you've got to change some lights, do the sound yourself. There are many mm -hmm. scenes in this film where I actually set some body mics, some some, sorry, some, some lavalier mics on the actors, tested levels, put the sound down, and just started shooting as a right. cinematographer and director. Um, and what I, I also want to mention with both Frank and Barbara here is that I really wanted to work with their strengths and also, for, like, for Frank, against type. Frank is the most hysterical, brilliant comedian who I've, I have had the pleasure to know. And 
to watch how he trusted me and allowed himself to be so vulnerable mm -hmm. in this role, um, I, I really I thank you for well, that. Thank you. And I could not have done it without you, and I and mm -hmm. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. It's, it was an amazing opportunity, and and you know it's it is new for me. Even even you know I didn't. I've not been acting a long time, and I mean, I've been overacting and ham ham hawking up for a long time. But, um, but you know, to to take it seriously and to do something that wasn't uh, a silly thing was fun. But with all the laudatory comments, it all goes back to the very beginning of this conversation. It's all about telling a story. Yes. And what Craig Otto did was tell a good story, which really, when you go to the movies and you want popcorn. That's what you want, mm -hmm. and he's done that. Thank you. I think so too. You and guys have been great. I I loved the movie. I loved having you all here. Your performances were amazing. Again, I didn't recognize you in the beginning. Thank you. <laughs> I knew who you were, but as always, there was some special eye contact going on in that hotel room with Frankie. Mm. Yes, absolutely. And the sandwich mm. looked delicious, by the way. <laughs> 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 our, our, our joke on set was that Miss Rosa, her character from Orange is the New Black, actually didn't pass away uh -huh. and actually was working in a hotel in Cleveland, Ohio, uh -huh. <laughs> or Columbus, Ohio. So we just kept joking. Oh, it's yeah. a continuation of your storyline. Well, how many of those sandwiches did you make? Mm. Take after take mm. after take. Mm. Sounds like it was a great time on set from, from start I got to a bur finish. I got to share birthday cake yeah. in the scene I was in. Right. I was very excited. I have a right. mouthful of birthday cake. I think the, is it the first, <laughs> the first moment shot you of you, yeah. it is it is the most true moment I've ever seen of mine on film was me with a mouthful <laughs> of cake <laughs> speaking. That is there is that is me all over the place. Reason <laughs> enough to go and right. see this film. A mouthful of cake. Take it send us off. I'm gonna Thank you so much for your time, and uh, look, be on the lookout for our film titled Run. Thank you.